Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Piper Report. So many of you know that I probably don't, I really don't do video responses that often. Now, I'm not saying that's bad, it's just, I really don't. And I have nothing against Riley Dennis as a person. I disagree strongly on some aspects with Riley's political philosophy, but I don't disagree with Riley as a person. But what Riley is advocating for here is censorship. It is fascistic tactics, and I'm going to explain why, that not only is this a bad road to go down, this is a dangerous road to go down. I'm not going to play the whole video. I have it at 1.5 normal speed. I'm going to pause in certain segments. I'm going to play it till about the three-minute mark. I'm going to kind of go over something, um, just so you know what Riley's talking about here at Reynolds' two-minute mark is comparing YouTube to other social media platforms, but... We'll stop it around the three minute mark and we'll go from there. Social network. They want to keep you on the site instead of you leaving to share stuff on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. They want to be the place where you're sharing content and engaging with it instead of some other social network. Even if it sometimes acts like it wants to be a Netflix or a Hulu competitor, it's much more like a social network. And because of that, its blocking function should behave more like that of any other social network. Which leads me to my first point. If YouTuber A blocks YouTuber B, these videos should not appear in the suggested video section next to YouTuber A's videos. The suggested video section is often just called the sidebar. So let me explain how this would work. Currently, if YouTuber B makes a response to YouTuber A, that sends traffic from B's video to A's video. YouTube sees this traffic and thinks, oh wow, these videos are related. If someone sees one of them, they'll want to see the other. So it starts recommending B's video next to A's video. And it doesn't matter if A blocks B, that will still happen. What I'm saying is that it shouldn't. YouTuber A should have control over all of their pages. That includes their channel page, but also all of their watch pages. Right now, YouTuber A has complete control over the video, the description, the comments, but not the suggested videos. Why not? YouTuber A's... Okay. All right, all right, all right. First off, I want to ask Riley, what is considered harassment? Is someone disagreeing with your conclusions harassment? Because that's what it appears. The way Riley makes it sound, and I'm not sure if Riley kind of hinted at this now or if it's going to be in the video later on, but... These suggestions on the right are full of hateful video responses, attacking Riley as a person and not Riley's argument. But here's mine. I have a roaming millennial video. I have Tucker Carlson one, Star Wars. I mean, if you look at these, there's nothing that's basically just straight out attacking Riley Dennis. And I, I don't understand... I have never seen, I should say, I've never seen video suggestions that were, they do nothing but attack the person, not the person's argument. Disagreeing with somebody is not harassment. And I want to give a good parallel here because this is kind of what, what Riley is kind of advocating for. Here's an example. Let's say, as we know, there are, is a lot of fake news being disseminated in the world today, in the country today. So in Riley's imaginary world right now, a company like CNN could disseminate some type of fake news story. And a lot of people, they would see that fake news story, and then they could go to either Fox News or Breitbart or some other media organization that differs from CNN, and then they can see if the story is the same there. And then based on that other information, they can either do further investigation into whether that news story that was reported on by CNN is indeed true. The way Riley wants it is that once you see the CNN story, you're not allowed to go see other stories like at Fox News or Breitbart or other right-wing news sources. It is essentially creating an echo chamber where you cannot get a differing opinion. So I think it really comes down to one question that Riley needs to answer is, what is harassment? And it appears that Riley believes harassment is anyone who disagrees with Riley's opinion. All right, let's watch next minute. The viewers have to see videos in the sidebar every time they watch one of their videos. It's a part of the user experience. And having the sidebar filled to the brim with hateful content, insulting, and dehumanizing YouTuber A is off-putting. In fact, I get messages from people all the time asking me if I can do something about the videos in the sidebar because it's hurtful to them to constantly see that. I wish I could give them a better response. YouTube should give creators control over their own watch pages. If you block a YouTuber, their videos should not appear in the sidebar next to any of your videos. It's that simple. As a kind of add-on to that one, there's another annoying thing that happens with B's video being linked in the algorithm to A's video. Let's say you're a viewer and you watch YouTuber A's video. You ignore the sidebar and leave the app and everything is fine. Then you come back a little while later and on the home screen you have a bunch of videos recommended to you. Currently, it's super likely that you'll be recommended YouTuber B's videos because you watched A's video. The association that it creates in the algorithm follows the user afterwards to continue recommending them hateful content that they actively try to avoid. That's the opposite of a friendly user experience. So in addition to blocking videos in the sidebar, you should be able to block videos from being recommended to your viewers as a result of them watching your video. Basically, there needs to be something in the algorithm that works with a block function to say A has blocked B. Therefore, stop associating any of A's videos with B anywhere in the system, whether that's suggested videos or recommended videos or anywhere else. Also, if Okay, 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 okay. Here's where we get to the censorship crux of it all. 
here's where we get to the censorship. What Riley is saying here is that if I if you watch Riley's video, you should only be able to watch Riley's videos based on Riley's conclusions. You should not be able to watch a dissenting video. Dissenting meaning somebody who disagrees with Riley's opinion. That's what Riley wants. That is fascistic tactics. <laughs> that is censorship right there. This is the one good thing that YouTube is doing. That this uh, autoplay, that next videos come up, it's not just one straight echo chamber news stories. It's different. So for instance, one of Riley's videos might play, and the next one might be a video debunking Riley's video. That is good. That is what the fabric of society is created from. The free flow of ideas, the ability to have an open mind, the ability to hear other disagreements other than what you want people to hear. People have the right to hear more than one point of view. Riley doesn't want that. Riley wants you to hear only Riley's point of view and no other point of views that differ from Riley's. And that is what censorship is. Pushing one narrative, pushing one point of view. And if you disagree with that, it's because you are harassing that person. You no longer disagree with that person's opinions. You are disagreeing with that person, at that person's character. And that's just, <laughs> that's wrong. That is not how society works. This snowflake mentality that words hurt so bad that we have to completely obfuscate our realities from it. We have to completely be in our safe spaces for all of mankind, for all the rest of our lives, because we just can't, it's too much pain for us to hear a dissenting point of view is just insane. It is insane that we are devolving to this standpoint, that we are devolving back to this primitive age where words hurt. I remember growing up and there used to be a slogan, sticks and stones might break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is now on its head. Sticks and stones don't break my bones, but words will kill me. I mean, you have to be stronger than that. You have to be stronger to actually be able to hear dissenting opinions and not consider it harassment, not consider it as a personal attack of your character, but an attack, not even attack, but of a differing opinion of your conclusions. That is how society should function. That is the structure of society. But we are not seeing that nowadays. Riley is trying to push the same agenda that we are seeing on college campuses, where nobody can talk to you. If their views are different than your own, you don't have the right. You have the right to not be able to hear them. But not only do you have that right, you have that right to take away their right to say what they think. That is censorship. That is fascistic tactics when it comes to freedom of speech. It's kind of funny, like, these groups that support Antifa, and Antifa believes strongly in this, what I just mentioned, <laughs> they stand for anti-fascist, yet they are employing fascist tactics. Anyways, let's go on to around the 515 mark. If you watch someone, they shouldn't show up in your related channel section. This is a spot in the lower right corner of your channel that just recommends channels YouTube thinks are similar to yours. But I'm sure you can see how that can be abused. If someone is targeted by like five different harassers, their own channel can then be promoting those same harassers. You can turn this feature off, but then it prevents you from showing up in other people's related channel section. The block function should be included in the algorithm for this too. So it knows that YouTuber A has blocked YouTuber B, therefore B can't show up in A's related channel. And for all the stuff that we've talked about so far, like blocking someone from your suggested videos, blocking them from your viewers' recommendations, and blocking them from your related channels, I think those should go both ways. As in, if YouTuber A blocks YouTuber B, then A's videos should not be shown in the sidebar next to B's videos. A's videos should not later be recommended to B's viewers, and A shouldn't appear in B's related channel section. I think. Okay, so for the most part, Riley's pushing the same opinion, the same narrative that Riley's been pushing the whole video. But a couple things I want to add to that here is that what what this concludes, or what this this kind of means to everybody, is that Riley's opinion is the correct opinion. Maybe that person, Riley, maybe that person that Riley blocked is somebody trying to prove Riley wrong in an argument. So should Riley's subscribers not be allowed to see a dissenting viewpoint? A dissenting viewpoint that could, in fact, prove that Riley is wrong? This is like confirmation bias on a grand scale. You're only allowed to watch suggested videos and autoplay videos 
that agree with the video you just watched. That is a horrible, horrible problem to have. Again, it comes back to this, this snowflake mentality, this fragile, fragile self that we are not strong enough. We as people are not strong enough to hear other points of views. And I want to keep talking about that because I don't want to sound like an echo chamber myself. But I think Riley should respect Riley's fans more. Riley should respect the fans more that subscribe to Riley's channel. That they are tough enough to hear dissenting viewpoints. They are tough enough to hear a viewpoint that differs in Riley's because Riley could be wrong. It's almost like Riley is guaranteeing that Riley is never wrong. Okay. <laughs> it just... Okay. I think this can help stop some of the dogpiling that is inherent in response channels because it makes it a little harder for B's viewers to find A's channel. So the disassociation in the algorithm should go both ways. Also, when you block someone, that should prevent them from subscribing to you or liking or disliking your videos. On all other social networks, when you block someone, it blocks every way that you two can interact. They can't like your tweet. Okay, now that one, that one I don't really see it that huge of a problem with. I mean, it's possible it could devolve into worse things, but for the most part, I mean, I don't see that as a problem. There's, there's another one coming up here that that Riley mentions as well that I really don't, I guess, see a problem with. But for the most part, this censorship agenda Riley is advocating for is scary. It's scary and dangerous. Tweets or follow you or anything like that. Weirdly, that's not the case on YouTube. So even though YouTuber A has blocked YouTuber B, B can still be subscribed to A, still get a notification every time A uploads, and still be able to thumbs down every single one of A's videos. Why? Why is that still a thing? If you block someone, they shouldn't be able to subscribe to you. That's for sure. But right now, you have no way to stop someone from subscribing to you, which is a mess. If you have someone harassing you, you can't prevent them from getting a notification every single time you... What is harassment, though? That is the key question in this whole video. What constitutes harassment? And I think when you answer that you will have the answer of why YouTube is doing what they're doing now. Disagreeing with somebody is not harassment. That's why all these videos that might have a disagreement with Riley isn't considered harassment. Harassment is when you attack somebody, you denigrate them, you cast aspersions toward them, you attack their character, not their argument. That is harassment, or you stalk somebody and keep doing that. Not disagreeing with your opinion, that's not harassment. Upload. I also think they shouldn't be able to like or dislike your videos if you've blocked them. They can't comment, so why allow them to interact with the video at all? There also needs to be two different one-click options for blocking someone who has commented on your channel. The first should block them, remove their comment from your channel, and store the comment in a comments from banned users section that's tucked away in the creator studio. The second option should block them and completely delete their comment from your channel. I think there should be two options because a lot of people are going to want some sort of archive for the hateful comments they've received, while others are going to want to get rid of them. See, for this, this kind of bugs me on, on a philosophical level, and... We should not, it should not be that easy to completely segregate people from one another, which is what Riley's advocating for. It should not be that easy where you can just simply block somebody and that means their opinions are forever out of your circle, your, your echo chamber. I mean, it, that's, that's the crux of the issue. Segregation is getting worse. It really is. And segregation leads to discrimination. And how do you segregate people? You segregate people by not listening to what they say. Well, social media platforms are making that easier and easier now to block dissenting viewpoints. If you keep doing that, you're going to create your own echo chamber. And all those people are going to be... They're, they're going to be in awe of you, of what you say, because they haven't heard any differently. They're not going to be as willing to listen to other viewpoints because they're so used to hearing you and your opinions as gospel. So I vehemently disagree with this idea of censorship on a philosophical level. The exchange of opinions, the free flow of ideas in society is imperative for a society to function properly. Riley doesn't believe that. Completely. But as it is right now, blocking someone on YouTube is like a five-click process at the minimum. You have to go to their channel, navigate to the about page, open another menu, click block, and then confirm it. It's a tedious and time-consuming process that makes it impossible to do at any sort of large scale. Plus, you can't currently block people on mobile at all, which is just a huge oversight. So both of these one-click blocking options need to be implemented on the desktop and on mobile. They could easily be tucked away in a little three-dot menu that's beside each comment. So technically, it'd be more like a two-click option, but that's still substantially better than the current process. Also, YouTube should give users a way to only see comments from people they've subscribed to. This could be by allowing them to filter their notifications, or just being able to toggle a filter for how they view the comments below their video, or both. On Twitter. See, this one too, I really, I guess, don't see a huge problem with it. I mean, because there are trolls out there. I, I disagree with it. I think, like on my channel, uh, anyone can post. I don't have anyone blocked. I think I got 
two words I think I have in the spam filter just because one of them is for personal reasons and the other one is just a word I hate. So most people don't use it, but if they do, I go to the spam filter, but I don't block anybody. There's no point. I mean, and so, but I understand that um, if you are um, um, reporting on really, I guess, sensitive topics and you only want to live in your echo chamber, it's kind of hard to see. I mean, I, I that one I can see why people would want that. Um, I disagree with it, but I understand that I could see why people would want that, and that's really not censorship in my mind. For example, you can turn off notifications for everyone who you're not following. That way you only see notifications and mentions from people you're following. YouTube needs a similar thing. This would allow people to keep the community aspect of YouTube alive, even when they're being attacked by thousands of awful comments. I love the community aspect of YouTube, and I want to see it survive, but it's currently being killed by tons of nastiness. This could at least fight against that. I think YouTube could also just do away with the dislike button entirely. YouTube is one of the few social media networks that has a dislike button. Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram all just have likes and comments, no dislikes. Facebook has five different emotion reactions, but none of them is strictly a dislike. Obviously, some sites like Reddit have a downvote, but I don't think Reddit is the site you want to be emulating, considering it's the whole Yeah, okay. Home base for a lot of the horrible people on the internet who target. So, Riley attacks, Riley attacks Reddit, and yes, the dislike button. As we know, Amy Schumer got the dislike button removed on Netflix, and it just what this does. It just substantiates and reinforces the snowflake mentality that words hurt and words kill, and <laughs> that's not how society functions. Again, I'm sorry for just repeating myself, but there's so many things. It just there's so many. The fundamentals that Riley is just omitting, that Riley is just missing. And once Riley can actually figure that out, figure out what society actually is and how civics and philosophy just intertwine in our world, I think Riley would get a much different view of the world and get rid of this snowflake mentality, get rid of this notion, this belief that words can kill you, that words do indeed hurt. Words may hurt, but they don't kill you. And you know what? There's there's an old cliche af aphorism. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's what Riley doesn't understand. That's what many of these regressives don't understand. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You should be proud of your opinion. You should be willing to preach what you believe. Even if people disagree with it, you should stand up for what you believe. Not hide away from everybody. Not... Put your fingers in your ears, close your eyes, and go na 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 na. No, none of that. You should be willing to argue your position. You should be willing to stand up for what you think is right, even if the majority of people think you're wrong. That's what strength is. That's what character is. That's what integrity entails. Riley doesn't see this. And many of Riley's followers, or many of people that believe like Riley does, they also don't see it. And this is wrong. And censorship is not the answer. Censorship is not the answer for dissenting opinions. It's just not. And I'm done.